Thanks. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Welcome, everybody. I just dropped the resources for today in the chat. Uh, I am Julie Erickson. I'm a learning specialist at Thai Technology and Innovation and Education. And with me today is Joan Yupel, and I'm a recently retired K through 12 school librarian and English teacher. And Julie and I have been uh, working on this grant project since 2018. Yes. And so we are really excited to share with you kind of some of the some of the big things that we learned, um, along with um, inviting you to participate in the in the process and um, jump into OER Commons and also um, see kind of where you know what we did while we went through the went through the process so i dropped the resources in the chat they're at tie.link slash oe21 and if we scroll on down we have kind of the big picture of of everything that that the grant was about. And so it was a three-year grant. We worked with three states, South Dakota, North Dakota, and Wyoming. And we had 13 participants from each state, so a total of 39 participants. And our, our overarching focus was OER. But then we also um, moved into, you know, how do you, how do you, um, incorporate that you'd also need the technology and the leadership in there and so we focused uh, we added on um, technology and leadership so we focused on the the um, evaluating and curation and during our first year we did remixing and contribution um, and then we also expanded out to other oer repositories and then finally this last year has been how do we sustain the work and so how do we build that collaboration beyond just our cohort and out out beyond um, into into other areas and then the communication and how do we continue with that that communication um, so as we we scroll on down um, our main um, platform that we utilized was OER Commons. And so if you would like, if you don't have an OER Commons account, we encourage you to create an OER Commons account. They are free. And then we also encourage you to join our group, Expanding OER in the School Library. Because within this group, it uh, gives us an opportunity to pull in resources that you may find useful um, in school library um, for, you know, pull in resources that are useful for school library. And then we've also added a couple of discussions um, here that we'll direct you to in a little bit. And so we encourage you to also um, check those out. So the links are on the, um, at the beginning of our, our page. And you could also so, follow along whether you have an account or not, but to be able to actually, um, answer the discussion questions and to upload resources, you do need an account. Because our overarching, overarching goal, as Julie said, is that we want to expand the school library presence in all OER, but we'll start with OER Commons. So as part of the part of the work that we did with the grant, um, we are producing a guidebook. And so currently it's in draft form because we got an extension of a year for the grant due to due to the pandemic. And we have provided you with the link to the draft, though, because the draft is almost as I mean, it's not as pretty, but all the contents there. Um, and so as you as you hop in, you will be able to get the big picture of the of the project. Um, and so you'll also see that we've added in our courses, um, course two, course four, and course six, which are our OER, um, which are our OER focused courses. And so if you click on those links, it will take you right down to, to that information. And so, of course, eventually the guidebook will be in OER Commons because um, it, it need, excuse me. It is designed for others to replicate, adapt, edit, pick and choose the parts that work for you. And again, not every course it was every somewhere the thread of OER was through everything we did. The specific courses were the two, four, and six because we also had um, 
their graduate students, but they were at very different levels in their technology and leadership and certainly OER skills. And so we did a lot of background building and then we did a lot of scaffolding for them. And so as you go in, you will see you have access to the actual course itself. So you can jump in and, and see the structure and everything. Um, course two, we did exploring OER um, and sent them out to really dive into OER Commons. And so participants had that opportunity to explore OER Commons, collaborate with other librarians, and really um, um, jump into all of that and so <clears throat> when we did this um the other thing the other professional development that we had within this this grant was every year we had a webinar series uh which was built around a um a topic and then we also had our technology and innovation and education or Thai conference that allowed our participants an opportunity to not only have a focus session a four-hour session of just um, grant work but then we were also able to they were also able to build their own professional development by attending the conference sessions so here's kind of the, the outline for, for each of the years. And you can, like I said, jump into each of the, the OER courses. And of course it was um, built to be hybrid, the project. And unbeknownst to us with, with the very first planned event, we had a blizzard in Wyoming. So we went right to Zoom before anybody even knew what Zoom was about, except Julie. And then, um, we really were very prepared when the pandemic came along and we made further adjustments. Yeah, the, the cohort was exceptionally well prepared when the, when the pandemic came along. They were already Zoom proficient. Um, so as we as we go through and and look more, um, there's a couple of um, so so our very first year we worked on on curation and so that was um, we, we really jumped into are you a curator or a dumper and in the chat we're curious are you a curator or a dumper um because that's one of the things that's kind of a fun <laughs> fun thing to think about and the cult of pedagogy does a really nice job of illustrating that by saying you have a friend who's asked you to for sushi recommendations, and you send a list of links like this, or if you curate them down and send a nice list of links like this. Oh, Katie, you're a curator. I admire you because <laughs> I'm kind of a dumper, um, and but I'm working on it. But so it that <laughs> you guys are really good. <laughs> um, so that was the, the big focus of the first year was like building those curation skills and then how do we collaborate and come out. And so do you use OER Commons? Um, and <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, thank you. I'm glad somebody's a dumb herder. Um, and, and so we really work to talk about curation and how that looks and how it looks in OER Commons. And so, for example, um, we had them get, we gave them the opportunity to curate in a group. And so, if I pop into our reaching out group, you'll see, and you can go into our reaching out group too. Um, you just can't join it. Um, <laughs> sorry. Here's the reaching out group. Um, Yeah, you'll see that we had collections there for the work they did in course two, four, and six. And then within, we, we taught them quite a bit that like within OER Commons, you can go to your my items and curate just for yourself or things that you want to come back to. And then you can curate into um, my groups, which we created this group for the cohort. And then a step further, you can create into my hubs. And the state of Wyoming and also North Dakota had hubs in OER Commons, which was another plus um, when we started. And, and course, Wyoming has expanded significantly. When, when yeah. we started, they hadn't um, opened theirs up 
it, you know, it was, they were still in the building stages. And so very exciting when at, towards the end of the grant is they, when they opened up their hub um, so that, that Wyoming, Wyoming school um, participants school members can join and um, collaborate. And so they have, and they have developed processes and everything there too. So it's been um, exciting to have that to, to, to carry through. Um, but then we also spent quite a bit of time of using outside curation tools outside of the OER Commons platforms. Because one of the questions that continually came up is, well, I'm finding this stuff, but where do I put it? And how do I use it? And how do I keep it? And so um, it's time for your first question yeah. in the discussion tab. Uh, the so, tool Wakelet was quite new when we started, but I am a total um, convert. I love Wakelet. I use it for all kinds of things. And I was using it my, as, um, even as portfolio or research space for my eighth grade students too. But we'd like to know what do you, you use to curate so, your situation. Yeah, so I encourage you to join the group for today's session. And then also, um, I drop that in the chat and then the, the discussion question, um, we're on question one, and that is what tools do you currently use to curate OER content? Um, or you can just drop it in the chat too and right. we'll We'll, cur we'll curate that and dump it into the discussion so people can kind of see. Because I use Wakelet extensively um, and I also use Digo quite a bit to curate content for myself. Um, it just makes it a little easier to um, come back and be able to find those things that, oh, this looks interesting. Um, I, where, where did I put that type of thing? So I appreciate having multiple tools. Right, and I use Digo. And at one time, I was all into Pearl Trees. And then um, Wakelet has just, they have just continually added features. And we were a Google Classroom school at that time. And so it just, well, and Google Classroom works beautifully with OER Commons, too. And Flipgrid, there's so many different features and things you can do with Wakelet. So I, I kind of skipped around, but because of evaluation oh, yeah. is the next thing that we did. And the reason we ended up doing evaluation second was because we were working with the ISKME framework and the ISKME framework. Oh, sure. I can talk to, I can, I can talk about Digo all day, of course. <laughs> so I love Digo and we'll just hop right into my, my Digo account. Um, you're going to notice that I have the Digo add-on on my on my browser and I have it on all of my all of my different browsers so that I can quickly add add resources. One of the things I like about Digo is if like you add bookmarks to your on your browser, you know, you just you just star something on your browser. Um, you, you have to put it in um, folders or, you know, whatever. And if you're like me, aka the dumper, you end up with the other folder or the miscellaneous folder. And that's just where you start putting things after a while, because it's like, well, this is, this is really important for math and science and OER, you know, it's like, what folder do you put it in? So with Digo, what I can do, and so I'll give you a sample. So I'm going to bookmark our discussions page. I click on Digo. I can save a bookmark. I can add my label, add my tags to it. And so I can use any number of tags. Um, and so like when I'm at a conference, a lot of times I will add the, the OE21 because I'll remember that, um, that maybe that's where it was. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then I'm going to hop back over to my Digo. And when I refresh, there it is. Um, and so now I can search uh, by keyword. I can search by tag. I can do all sorts of things like that. So I'm just going to click on OER. And that's going to bring up all the things that I've tagged with the OER tag. And so you see, I have 313 results. Um, the other thing that I do with OER, with Digo a lot is outliners. And so you can really easily send um, when you're bookmarking, you can send something over to an outliner or you can you can create them. Um, and so this is just 
an outline of links. And so I've done that. I use Wakelet a little bit more now because of the, um, it's, a, it's more visual, but for my personal use, I use Digo a lot, just as my kind of like, this is where, where I put everything that ever might have interested me at any time. So, it, and there's, there's a free version, there's also um, a paid version, and there's also an educator version. Um, I actually use it so much I've gone to the paid version, but the educator version, you set up your free account and then you can apply for the educator, um, free educator, and it bumps you up. Um, so you have a few more features. But yeah, I could, I could talk about Digo all day long. So no derailing. And Right, not at all. And I had, I used Deagle a lot when I taught a um, college level research class. We used we used that for a curation tool. But then with eighth graders, it it was totally Wakelet because uh, Wakelet is more visual, and it's a little more um, well because of the Wakelet class too. Work. Well, yeah. Um. So here's here's Wakelet. Um. And. I also have the Wakelet add-on on my browser so that I can add add links there. Um, and I'm not sure, do you, um, I don't know where the one we're doing together is, maybe it's here. I have no idea at this point. Oh, here it is. But then it's the idea of the, there it is. Um, and I've just added, I've just added the, uh, that rubric that I liked and that I watched like 15 minutes ago mm -hmm. from this conference. So to give you an idea. And, and so for, for me, the drawbacks um, with Wakelet are I can't add tags. And so I'm running into that organizational kind of like just keeping track of all of my links. Um, but I love the visual and I love being able to curate into a Wakelet. And so that's kind of, I, I tend to do, and, and like Joan, you, you found something that was very specific OER and you dropped it in there. Um, and so that was that was really great. You can, in this one, the tags are a downfall, but you can annotate, you can share, it can be collaborative. Um, like you just saw Julie get into, this is a collection in my account. That I can collaborate in. Right. Cool. Okay. All right. So yeah, we can talk about creation all day. So we better move on. <laughs> um, the other thing that, uh, so so evaluation was, was part of the second year and why you asked the ISKME framework which is also an IML, part of an IMLS grant, a different one, not ours, um, wasn't done when we started ours, but we had built it into our grant. And so in the second year, we were able to bring in the, um, the ISKME framework. And I do, you know, like, like working with Wyoming, they, for their hub have developed a, a OER process and they've also done a evaluation process. And so step four, when you're on the OER curation process steps is how you can um, evaluate to see if it, if it supports OER. And so that's where you can look at your, your um, copyright or, or your licensing. Um, you can also look at your format. Can you edit it? Um, and is it reusable? And then we move on to step five. Oops. Yeah. Step five is where we have, and this is, I just, I just get so excited about this because you have your standards alignment rubric, which is really important when we're in schools, but then you also have your accessibility, which I really, you know, like today, I'm so glad that, you know, like we, we talked about how we got the, um, transcript, you know, how you can access that. Um, and then finally, evaluating bias. And so you can go through and evaluate um, how that is, is set up. And so all three of those are part of the ISME framework. And if you go into our group and look at the OER Commons, I'm all over the place today, Joan, apparently. Okay, um, if you go into our group and look at course two or course four or um 
that group, what they did in this one is they actually evaluated these utilizing the um, framework. And so that was, so all of these that are collected in here have been part of the, were, were evaluated. So just kind of as you're, as you're jumping in. Um, and then AASL has also put together an OER toolkit, toolkit and theirs is um, a little less specific than the ISME framework, but it's, it's got good, good stuff in it too. All right, now, um, now we can talk about Remix, Joan, and this is so much fun. So do you want me to hop in? Well, yeah, and while you're doing that, I'll just say that one of the things that we found with our cohort members, and I think is true across K-12 education, is they often wanted a specific subject, subject and they searched for it, and they're like, oh, there's nothing there, I can't use this. But OER is not that quick and that simple. Um, in, in my mind, every subject is, something that can be used for library or library instruction. Or if you're working, for instance, my example here with the eighth grade history teacher and they're reading Anne Frank in ELA class, um, this particular resource had nothing to do with Anne Frank. However, it was fantastic. And with OER Commons in that platform, the remix is basically a template. And it is so easy to do that. So we added what we needed in there, along with the other great content that was there. You can see in version history, if you click on that, Julie, it shows you like who the original um, creator was for that. And then um, what I really like too about this is that you can see when you click on view resources, you can see the teacher view, and then you can see the student view, and it, you can put it right into um, Google Classroom, but also everything in OER Commons, if it's, if you're able to remix it, it has the remix button right there. And they have an authoring tool. It has to be authored, put in through their authoring tool to be able to remix. And of course, it depends on what Creative Commons licensing is attached to it also. But it's pretty simple for someone who knows nothing about OER to get started. And they have a lot of very helpful um, how-to videos. And so that's an example of a remix because we know Anne Frank's father was the one survivor and that's where he survived out of Outswitch. And um, the other great thing is, you know, like you've, um, with this remix, uh, made sure that it's it's really more like a, a hyperdoc um, exactly. than a you know, just a just a text heavy document. And so this is actually a lesson plan that you could take and use with your learners rather than having to to do something something else with it. So the idea that you're gonna, you know, find that magic wonderful resource or lesson that with the first search is something we worked quite a bit with on our um, with our cohort and that what you find, you know, what can you do with it? How can you make it work? So we'd like, you know, do you, when you have time, or if you have not yet done this, just take a look at some of the remix options within this platform to give you an idea of that. And then our final big step with OER was to have them actually create and contribute. Because often, you know, I've been in education over 40 years, you find great stuff, you adapt it, you use it, but that sharing back, that taking the time, to share it back um, beyond like, you know, your neighbor down the hall or the next, the librarian at the next school. Um, that's what we really need to see um, more librarians doing, I feel, is that contributing back. And so in our last course, that was a requirement. And um, we used OER Commons again. And here's an example, you can use their authoring tool. And here's an example of one that um, Julie and I created for that. And you can, it, it's again, a template. You can have this in a Google doc and just cut and paste into the right spots. And you can add as little or as much as you want. One of the things too, through the whole project is we wanted these um, activities and assignments to be things they could use tomorrow not something um, that wasn't relevant to their everyday life right now. And so you might take a lesson that you've already taught five or six times and then adapt it to, to put in. Um, then there are other, the other way, if you go back, Julie, to the other link is finding just 
a resource that you don't, back to the agenda, sorry. Oh, sorry. I wasn't clear. Um, there are other ways to add things to OER Commons. So I just gave you one example of that. Yeah, the eighth grade middle school LA. It doesn't have to be something that you totally create and you're still contributing back. Like you found this great um, resource and then you can put that resource into the OER Commons. So um, and then the last, the last component was, you know, how do we increase school librarian presence in OER Commons, but then also increase that awareness um, for OER possibilities for K-12. If we look at our guidebook and kind of, you know, talk about the results of the project and, you know, how that, how that worked out, um, there was some definite, um, I don't want to go that far. Uh, we had, you know, lots of graduate credit, lots of um, lots of really great things. Um, the things that support open education resources, um, you know, when you're looking at that collaboration component, you know, look how this was before um, one of their courses, and then after, you know, they they are identifying collaboration as a strength. Um, they're they're you know really emphasizing technology um, and leadership. But one of the things that really derailed everything was the pandemic because many of the group felt that they could not push like one more thing on to their colleagues. And so while they could still curate and pull together and contribute, you know, library resources, taking it further into their districts was, was a little bit more of a challenge. Um, but we did um, ask administrators and um, they really felt that librarians were um, critical on many of the areas um, that support integrating OER. And then my favorite is our, where is our, where is my favorite? Is it this one? Yes. Um, so this is the before and after. Um, I actually, amazingly enough, um, set up the evaluation so that we did, um, we asked questions before and after. It was, was um, and this is from the OER, um, the ISKME OER framework that's assessing readiness for OER creation. And so this was before the grant, the blue was, and then after the grant. And one of the things that um, was, I, I think, I, I just think it's exciting because it's like the more you know, um, the formal criteria and review processes, uh, we, we felt that that was one of those things that once we added in the ISME framework and there was all that you know, more information about what we need to look at with OER, because as librarians, we tend to think, oh yeah, I evaluate, you know, I evaluate and review and, you know, I have processes in place, but with OER, it's just a little bit different because there's, there's some other things we need to look at. And so that was pretty exciting. And then the other thing and is that, that, that dropped is encouraging educators to customize and adapt learning materials to meet local classroom needs. That is, that is strictly pandemic um, just because we were, you know, really, you know, I mean, that would have, uh, I mean, it's been, you know, they've, they've anecdotally shared with us that they just don't feel like they can push more out on, um, onto their, onto their colleagues at this point. So, and but, for example, but, oh, I was just going to add to that. For example, one of our librarians, rather than continuing on the OER, she spent her time teaching literally most of her colleagues how to use Google Classroom. And so her, her focus shifted due to the, the needs of the students and the teachers during the pandemic. Um, but I am, I am so excited that we have 39 um, librarians that are now, you know, aware and promoting and using open education resources, um, which is 39 more than we had before. <laughs> and then of course, um, we probably skipped this a little bit, but our whole project was um, because we were across three states we um, based it on national standards and frameworks, so AASL and the Future Ready Librarians, and then um, 
the ISTE standards. And there was great growth in all of those areas. And again, we concentrated on the OER as the biggest thread, but the, the technology and the leadership. Because those are really two necessary th things to bring this new concept into your school, into your district. Mm -hmm. And then maybe go down to some of our um, final results where okay. they had the potential to earn 12 graduate credits. And then those who went above and beyond could earn up to 15. And you know, over the three-year period, we I was going to say 407, yes, graduate credits were earned. And what was really impressive to us is the different ways each of our individuals used those credits. And many of them used it, you know, to renew their teacher certificate. Some of them actually um, had let, a one or two had let their teaching certificate expire. To some of the parameters to become a member of the group was you needed a four-year degree. You didn't need a library degree necessarily, because of course in our our states, there are different requirements for school librarians. And then they use them um, to move up on the salary schedule. They use them to start a master's degree, many different ways. And it was very um, ex you know, exciting um, to, to, to see. Um, we actually had two participants that went all the way, that, that earned every credit possible, um, <laughs> which is really cool. Um, and and but, yes, know. this was all paid for for them. Yeah. The travel, if they, I mean, what little travel we did, the credits, um, some of the instructional materials we used. And I think one of the uh, the biggest things with the um, cohort that we, one of the big challenges that we had was how do we build a group that, that communicates with each other and use each, uses each other as a resource. And so we created a private Facebook group from the beginning um, and as part of the course assignments, if you go through and look at the courses, you'll see that um, some of the assignments were post your goal to the Facebook group. And what we didn't do any, you know, you have to comment on three other people. There was none of that, um, but you just had to post. And what was really fascinating was we ended up with really authentic conversations where people would say, oh, I'm doing that goal, or I'm doing that too, or I've done that, here are some resources. And so it, it turned into this, 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 this authentic collaboration opportunity and communication opportunity. And we have had, I mean, just this week, somebody posted, I have, you know, eek, I got some bed bugs in the book return. You know, what do I do? And so, and the, and oh, and there's like half a dozen responses now, which is super cool. You know, I mean, when you think about, and yes, we did encourage them to build their PLN and go beyond our group, but just having that opportunity to, um, you know, we've, we've taken the same training and done the same resources. And so that's been, that's been really um, phenomenal as we, as we've gone through. Um, we have about six minutes left, Joan. I'm going to jump us up to the books, okay, because... Right, the and then also, you know, please unmute yourself or put it in the chat if you have questions. And we will... And let us know, too, if you take a look at the guidebook, um, things that are missing or that need some editing, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Um, why don't I remember where our books are? Do you remember um, where under the tools? tools? They're under the tools. Oh, okay. Sorry. There you go. What tools can you use? Okay. There we are. Um, so as you just FYI, for all the tools we did free resources, we use strongly Google. Um, but you can also, we also, you could use, um, you could also utilize um, Microsoft Office 365, you know, anything that allows you to, to have that collaboration component. Um, we used, you know, social media. We also used um, a lot of, um, um, I'm losing my mind. Um, 
outside like OER yeah. Commons, uh, yeah. yeah OER Commons was free etc cetera, etc cetera. we did have a paid zoom account because you need a paid zoom account um <laughs> when you're doing when you're doing this level of of communication um but the grant enabled us to purchase books for the cohort and so each year we purchased two titles at least um to enable them to um utilize those during the courses and so the now classrooms book um and there's there's one for k2 three five you know etc um that was for course one where they were doing their standards and diving into learning about standards it was also utilizing technology and so um, we actually had meg come in and talk with us um, Kristen Matson's Digital Citizenship in Action was utilized during the webinar series for year one. Um, year two, we utilized Hacking School Libraries, which was amazing because there's 10 different ways to incorporate um, the Library Media Center in your community. And one of the things we did with that was we said, okay, pick a hack. So they had an opportunity to pick a hack um and then that was what they focused on in the fall course um in turn and so we had everything from you know increasing reading in the library or focusing on reading to looking at policies and procedures and so it was it was really i mean when one of the participants readed their entire library you know we got new furniture and all sorts of cool things so that was exciting and it was fun to watch that conversation in the Facebook group because they had to share their hack and you know and then and then people would share resources and things like that. Um, for the um, we did use fact versus fiction for our um, spring course and that was the OER course but we also pulled in that that critical thinking and remember this is also the year where we were doing that evaluation and so it was a lot of you know it fit in really well and I'm so excited Jennifer Lagarde um, has a new book out so I'm, I'm excited about that and then you know the pandemic hit during year two and Lisa Johnson's creatively productive book was on Amazon Kindle for like super cheap, like $1.99 or something. And she actually, um, so for our Thai conference, we did it virtually and we gave everybody the book as a Kindle book. And Lisa came and spoke with us and she just has some excellent, if you're, if you're looking to organize your life a little more and think about how to organize your Google Drive and how to take notes and you know all that stuff, such a good resource. And so that was a really, it was, it was like perfect for the time because we needed something that that was you know like how to make your technology life better and, and it was good and then um oops what did i do oh i went into the book sorry yeah and we're, um, we're almost out of time but then for the last year and then our last year we did chart a new course uh which was another really great book because she has five chapters with um each one is a five to try and so bringing in technology with a focus around a topic and then um then our cohort was able to select their own titles for professional development and so if you roll on through you'll see um the all of these different titles were options and then keep clicking here's more of the ones that were selected and so that very last year we enabled our participants to go out and find their own titles and then we did did discussions so that is pretty much our session um, so if you have any questions um, we encourage you to go back into the oer group and in the discussions tab answer our question two um, that barriers the OER implementation and I will drop the resources in the chat again um, and they are linked on our session resources too I think so we please help us um, by looking at what the cohort has already done in OER Commons by by building that new group because we are going to keep this going and hopefully increase that school librarian presence throughout OER And Thank I you, think. everyone. Okay, everyone, join me in thanking our present presenters today. Um, if you have any more questions for them, then um, now is the time to do it. Uh, and uh, soon I'm going to stop the recording and you will be able to rewatch this tomorrow if you would like.
Thank you. Thanks okay. for spending time with us, everyone. Oh, a link to the PD books, yes. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording now. Okay.